Welcome into PFF TV. I'm Sam Monson. He's Mike Renner. And today we're going to talk about Steve Palazzolo's mock draft version 2 that's on ProFootballFocus.com right now. You can head there, see the entire mock. This video is brought to you by Eckrich, the official smoked sausage of the college football playoff. Mike, the thing we want to break down here is just this defensive line class. It's an incredible class deep on both edge rushers and defensive interiors. Let's start with the edge rushers because that has the highlight real name in there. It's Nick Bosa, arguably the best player in the entire draft right now. Yeah, Nick Bosa is, in my opinion, the best defensive lineman in the entire country, even though obviously out with the injury, not going to play the rest of his season here at Ohio State. But we've seen enough from him in that limited sample size that I'm pretty sure he's going to be pretty darn good. He, compare him to his brother Joey Bosa, and they are basically carbon copies of each other. I know it's lazy to do, you know, <laughs> brother scouting, but they are as identical as two brothers I've ever seen. Nick's a little smaller, but at the same time, I think he's probably a little more athletic than Joey was coming out. As a pass rusher, he has the highest win rate of any player in the nation this year, highest win rate of any player in the nation last year. Pretty comfortable saying he should be the number one overall pick if you don't need a quarterback. Right, and like his brother, he's been crushing the PFF grading system yes. all the way throughout his college career. And the important thing there is we saw just how automatically that translated when yes. Joey Bosa hit the NFL and just picked up the way he left off in college. What about some of these other guys, Mike? Who else you would be keeping an eye out on the edge rusher? Yeah, there are a handful of interesting names. The first guy I want to start off with is Brian Burns from Florida State. We highlighted him before the year as a guy who looked the part as an athlete, but hadn't quite looked the part in terms of grading, hadn't quite produced. That's changed this year. 52 pressures, he leads the nation. Another guy down in the South, East that has done the exact same thing as Josh Allen. He looked the part again last year, little undersized, put on I think 20 pounds this year at Kentucky, is now the highest rated pass rusher in the country this season. He's been fantastic. And the last guy, another one coming out of the Southeast, Florida, Ja'Kai Polite. He has jumped, came basically out of nowhere to put himself on the map. Extremely explosive, still fairly raw, but he has as much raw tools as any pass rusher in this class. What about moving to the big guys in the middle, Mike? Because this looks like it has the makings of a really spectacular class for interior defensive linemen. There's some absolute monsters currently playing their trade looking for the draft. Yeah, I've done our defensive line scouting for a handful of years now. This is by far the deepest D-line class that I've seen. If you are in the need for help along that front, this is the year to go address it. Like I said, there are 11 guys we have in the first round of our mock, and that's not even counting guys like Christian Wilkins, Raekwon Davis, or Clayton Farrell, who might actually end up there when it's all said and done. So the guys we like at the top, Ed Oliver gets all the hype, but we're not as high on him as some other people. We actually have Quinnen Williams out of Alabama as our top interior player. Love his versatility, can play up and down the line. So he plays one tech at Alabama right now, could play three tech in your defense. We can play some over the tackle as well. And we like Jeffrey Simmons out of Mississippi State. Same sort of positional versatility. Can play anywhere you want along the defensive line. Still like Ed Oliver, but rumors are he's only about 275 pounds right now. I'm not sure where you're going to put him at the next level. That's just a little too small to hold up every down on the interior, even though he's a monster at it right now in college. Particularly for a guy that's always graded better against the run mm -hmm. than as a pass rusher. If you're going to be that undersized defensive tackle, you need to be the Aaron Donald, Geno Atkins. You need to specialize in rushing the passer, penetrating into the backfield and shooting gaps, rushing the passer, pressuring the quarterback. That's not what he's been great at so far. Yeah, and playing a non-power five schedule like he has, he should be dominating these off the line. We saw even a season ago, Marcus Davenport was one of our highest graded pass rushers just because he physically could dominate the right. lineman there. Uh, in the non-Power 5 conference, Ed Oliver has not been doing that as a pass rusher. He's been fine, he's been good, but it's not the dominant level of grading that we'd like to see to say, we're going to take this guy number one, number two, top five. He might be a little bit behind that top group. Who else we got to look at, Mike? Let's bring us on home with these defensive interior guys. Yeah, three more guys we have in the first round in the interior. Dexter Lawrence, the only Clemson D lineman that have hyped up Clemson D lineman. He's the only one we like out of the group. Nose tackle, extremely athletic for a nose tackle. The type of guy who we think could actually affect at the nose as a pass rusher as well as a run stuffer. Like him a lot. And then two sort of three techs that have come onto the scene this year with very strong pass rushing grades. Draymond Jones out of Ohio State was great in a limited sample size a season ago. He's played more snaps and been more productive this season. And then Jerry Tillery has always been a guy who 
had the talent, 6'6", six, six, very long arms, physically imposing. He's now starting to put together a stable of pass rushing moves, use that length to his advantage. He's starting to creep up draft boards. Yeah, Tillery was an absolute monster in the Notre Dame game. Mm -hmm. I graded earlier this year. Absolutely spectacular in that game. That's going to do it for our breakdown of the defensive lineman in Steve Palazzolo's mock draft. Version 2, you can hit the whole thing on the website, profootballfocus.com. This video has been brought to you by Eckridge. Don't forget to pick up your Eckridge smoked sausage at your local grocery store for this weekend's tailgate or home gate party. And make sure to visit eckridgefootball.com for great game day recipes and to enter the season-long million-dollar challenge.